Hello everybody, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. Just so that you know, um, I have a second YouTube channel, so if you type in Chaplain Bob Walker and my main channel gets deleted, I'll have the backup channel. Uh, but that will I will I'm looking into getting a website to post the videos on so that I'm not censored by YouTube. So uh, you might want to take a look around or whatever. Uh, Google, I used to have a website where I was witnessing to the goths and the vampire wannabe community. And uh, basically, I told them about the blood of Jesus and eternal life through the blood. And uh, the site got, oh, I don't know, a quarter of a million plus hits. And then Google just basically deleted it from their listings. And this was like 10 years ago. So I basically let this, well, I let the site go. I mean, there was just, you know, I was getting two or three hits a month. Yeah, I just, it's just not worth keeping um, for, you know, that paying all that money for, for almost nobody there. So, so this censorship stuff's been going on for a while and uh, I'm not, uh, I just don't want to spend hundreds of hours putting together a website and then have them delete it. So if I'm going to do it, I'm going to find a web company that'll uh, let me speak freely. So I'm still checking it out. So if you know a website company in like Iceland or something, uh, they booted the bankers out of their country. Let me know. All right, this uh, is not going to be so much a Bible study as it is just a series of things to think about. So, you know, let's, uh, yeah, like I say, if I get uh, booted off of YouTube, look at my second channel, see if there's a, another website link if you're interested, or you could do a Google search, and if I'm not listed, well, try MSN, try Yahoo!, Try dogpile, because Google might, um, I, you, you never know what they're going to do. So, All right, let's get your King James Bibles out and we'll take a look. Maybe it's time to uh, start teaching some meat. You know, I've got people that want me to teach the meat, and sadly, the babies choke on meat. You know, if you feed a baby that's not weaned from the milk meat, they'll, uh, they can die. So, and then I've got other times that I make videos for new listeners to try to bring them into a deeper level of, of understanding. And one of the things people choke on is that the fallen angels have children on this earth. They just absolutely choke on that. And that's why you got all these churches teaching, whosoever will, whosoever will. Well, yeah, whosoever, the Bible does say, whosoever will shall be saved, right? In Revelation twenty two seventeen, we read, And the Spirit and the Bride say, Come. And let him that heareth say, Come. And let him that is a thirst come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. All right, so, but in Matthew 13, verse 1, we read, The same day Jesus went out of the house and sat by the seaside, and great multitudes were gathered together unto him, so that he went into a ship and sat, and the whole multitude stood on the shore. Can you imagine that? He's got so many people round about him that um, he has to preach from the you know a ship in the water. Can you imagine that? Turn to John chapter six, verse fifty-three. 
Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Sounds like something G uh, the vampire wannabes would, uh, they could get into that, right? Jesus said, Who is, who, Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood drinketh in me, and I in him. As the living Father hath sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. And yes, the uh, in the Talmud, they, they say that uh, Christians are a bunch of cannibals, because you've got to eat the flesh of Christ, right? So... We're a bunch of cannibals, they say. And uh, we drink blood, right? That's what they, that's, that's what they tell the uh, goers in the synagogues. John 6, 56. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the living Father hath sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me even he shall live by me. This is the bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. These things said he in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Many therefore of his disciples, when they heard this, said, This is a hard saying. Who can hear it? When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, Doth this offend you? What and if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? It is the Spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. But there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not and who should betray him. And he said, Therefore said I unto you that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my Father. Do you realize that nobody can come to Christ except it were given him of God the Father? And yet, they want you to believe that everybody can be saved. But is that what Jesus is saying right here? You know, verse 64. But there are some of you that believe not, for Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not, and who should betray him. And he said, Therefore said I unto you, that no man can come to me, can come unto me, except it were given unto him of my Father. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. That's John chapter 6, verse 66. John 6, 6, 6. Get it? From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will ye also go away? Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. And we believe and are sure that thou art that Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered them, have not I chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil? He spake of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, for he it was that should betray him, being one of the twelve. And you know, Judas is called the uh, son of perdition. And then, I forget who it is, somebody else also talks about the son of perdition in the end times. 
Yes, that's in John 17 and verse 12. Jesus said, While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me, I have kept. And none of them is lost, but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. See, Jesus knew from the beginning that Judas Iscariot was going to betray him. And he's called the son of perdition. I mean, perdition basically means going into apostasy and heresy. All right, now let's go to where son of perdition, the second time where it appears, that's in 2 Thessalonians, uh, that's in chapter 2. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, verse 1, 2 Thessalonians 2 and verse 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him. Have we been gathered together unto him? Not yet. That ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day, what day? The second coming. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Now, there's a group of people called Preterists, and I'll tell you in 70 AD, all this was fulfilled. Well, it was partially fulfilled. But, if the Jews rebuild the temple, and I think they will, there's two groups, two major groups of Jews that want to rebuild their little temple. Uh, the Temple Mount Faithful and the Temple Institute. They're not, re um, they're, they're competitors. But both of them want to rebuild the temple as a denial of what Christ did on the cross. And believe it or not, most, most uh, so-called churches, evangelicals so-called, they're for this. They want to build, help the Jews build the temple for the Antichrist, the son of perdition, the man of sin. Uh, John, in the book of Revelation, calls him the beast. And... Um, I think John also calls him the Antichrist. All right, let's check something else out. All right, let's read some uh, more John chapter 6. Verse 1. After these things, Jesus went over to the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. And a great multitude followed him, because they saw his miracles, which he did on them that were diseased. So, you know, some people want to get healed. Other people uh, want to see a circus show. Verse 3. And Jesus went up into a mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. And the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was nigh, which means near. When Jesus lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, he said unto Philip, Whence shall we buy bread, that these may eat? And this he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may take a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, saith unto him, there is a lad here, which hath five barley loaves and two small fishes, but what are they among so many? And Jesus said, Make the men sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down in number about five thousand. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples, and the disciples to them that were set down, and likewise of the fishes, as many as they would. When they were filled, he said unto his disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. Therefore, they gathered them together and filled twelve baskets, 
12 baskets, one for each tribe, right? 12 tribes of Israel. That number 12 pops up a lot in the Bible. Therefore they gathered them together and filled 12 baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves, which remained over and above unto them that had eaten. Then those men, when they had seen the miracle of Jesus, that, I'm sorry, then those men, when they had seen the miracle that Jesus did, said, This is of a truth, that prophet, that should come into the world. When Jesus therefore, therefore perceived that they would come and take him by force to make him a king, he departed again into a mountain himself alone. That's what I want to do. Go to a mountain alone and, and do some... Just me and God. I think I would like that. Verse 16. And when even was now come, his disciples went down into the sea and entered into a ship and went over the sea toward Capernaum. And it was dark and Jesus was not come to them. And by the season arose by, uh, by reason of a great wind that blew. And when they had rowed about five and twenty or thirty furlongs, they see Jesus walking on the sea and drawing nigh unto the ship, and they were afraid. But he saith unto them, It is I, be not afraid. Then they willingly received him into the ship, and immediately the ship was at the land whither they went. Huh. I just noticed that. Did you notice that? Immediately the ship was at the land whither they went. So Jesus gets in the ship, next thing you know, they're immediately at the land. Another miracle? Could be. The day following, when the people which stood on the other side of the sea saw that there was none other boat there, save the one whereon, where into his disciples were entered, and that Jesus was not with his disciples into the boat, but that his disciples were gone away alone. Howbeit there came other boats from Tiberias nigh unto the place where they did eat bread. After that the Lord had given thanks. When the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, Neither his disciples, they also took shipping and came to Capernaum seeking for Jesus. And when they had found him on the other side of the sea, they said unto him, Rabbi, when camest thou hither? In other words, you know, uh, when did you come here? You know, that's, that's Bob's version. Anyway, that's how I see it. Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, ye seek me, not because ye saw the miracles, but because ye did eat of the loaves and were filled. In other words, they didn't want to hear Christ talking about the things of God and, and the healing of the people and stuff. A lot of people were following him because Jesus was feeding them. And that's, that's how a lot of these soup kitchens are today. You'll have all kinds of drunkards and unsaved people show up at these soup kitchens for churches. And they do it not because they want to hear the word of God, but because they just want a meal. And what did Jesus say? Verse 27. Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for the meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him hath God the Father sealed. Then said they unto him, What shall we do, that we might work the works of God? Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God that ye believe on him whom he hath sent. So, all right, let's go take a, a look back. you got to realize something. Not everybody 
is going to have salvation. Not going to happen. All right, let's go back to Matthew chapter 13 and verse 1. The same day went Jesus out of the house and sat by the seaside, and great multitudes were gathered together unto him, so that he went into a ship and sat, and the whole multitude stood on the shore. Probably waiting for a meal, right? And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went out to sow. That's a farmer, you know, he's throwing the seed out. And, you know, planting seed, that's, that's what a sower is. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. It happens today. Farmer plants seeds, and the crows dig them up. Some fell among stony places, where they had not much earth. And forthwith they sprung up, because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. Remember in the Garden of Eden, when Adam fell, God said thorns and thistles would come up from the earth as a curse for disobedience. And they put a, a crown of thorns on Jesus' head when they were getting ready to crucify him, remember? And some of the seed, and some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. But other fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, some an hundredfold, some sixtyfold, and some thirtyfold. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? You know, why are you talking to them in parables? He, Jesus, he answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them it is not given. For whosoever hath, to him shall be given and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken away even that he hath. Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they seeing see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. You see, people can hear the gospel, but they won't understand it. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Esaias, Isaiah, the Greek rendering of Isaiah, Esaias, which saith, By hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive. For this people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them. You see, they could be saved. But do you know God blinds their eyes? Why? Because they love their sin more than they love the Lord. Remember the two commandments? Jesus said, love the Lord and love thy neighbor as thyself. And on those two things hang all the prophets, all the law and the prophets. Well, some people love their sin more than they love the Lord. Verse 16, Jesus said, but blessed are your eyes. He's talking to the disciples. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. For verily I say unto you, that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see, 
and have not seen them, and to hear those things which ye hear, and have not heard them. So, I guess we ought to read the, the interpretation. Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom, and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one, and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which received seed by the wayside. But he that receiveth received the seed in the stony places. The same is he that heareth the word, and anon with joy received it. Yet he hath not root in himself, but dureth for a while. For when tribulation or persecution ariseth because of the word, by and by he is offended. And that people is getting ready to happen. When, when people start finding out that they're going to be persecuted and trouble come because of the word of God, the words of Christ, and it's starting, they're going to be offended. And they're going to they're going to walk away. They're going to find out just how much sec eternal security really is. Now, I believe those that are truly born again of the Spirit are eternally sealed. I believe that. But there's a lot of people that have never been born again that think that all they have to do is believe in Jesus, just like Satan believes. The fallen angels believe in Jesus. They believe in God. They know who they know who he is. Believe me, they do. But are they saved? The fallen angels, Satan? No. They weren't born again. Yet hath he not rooted himself, but dureth for a while, for when tribulation or persecution arriveth. Because of the word, by and by he is offended. He also that received seed among the thorns is he that heareth the world, uh, I'm sorry, heareth, heareth the word and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becometh unfruitful. Because they care more about money and the things of this world than they do about the things of God. Didn't Christ say that it would be easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than it would be for a rich man to go to heaven? Being rich uh, by and by, uh, you know, of itself is not a sin. But some people put... 100% of their energy into wealth, wanting things. They would do absolutely nothing for the Word of God. If they found a Christian that had, you know, become disabled and, and couldn't work, and, you know, the government wouldn't give him disability, and he's living on the street, you think a rich person would take a $20 bill out of their pocket and give it to him? No. No. They have disdain for people like that. Oh, he's a bum. You know, a lot of them are bums. They just don't want to waste their their liquor and drug money on things like apartment rent. You know, they don't want to waste their money on rent. They'd rather, you know, live on the street and drink and do drugs. But not everybody's like that. I've been noticing families out on the street. Families. Would a rich person help them? Doesn't seem like it. I sure don't hear about it. Verse 23. But he that received seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit, and bringeth forth fruit, some an hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. Not everybody receives the word.
Let's go back to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means. Matthew 24, Jesus warned about being deceived. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he is God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? And now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. Now this is, you know, it, this was also where they were talking about, um, you know, in verse 4 it says he's going to be sitting in the temple of God. Well, preterists don't want you to know this verse 9. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. They want you to think that General Titus of the Roman army had all power and signs and lying wonders. I don't believe that. I do not believe that General Titus was doing had all power and signs and lying wonders. I mean, when you read the book of Revelation, I mean, it, it very plainly tells you that the false prophet is going to be able to do miracles. And I think this is in reference to that. And I don't think General Titus did that in 70 AD. So I think Jews are going to rebuild their temple again and then the false messiah is going to come. And Christians are going to suffer the greatest persecution that you have ever seen in the history of the world. And I'll tell you what, people, if you knew the history of what happened in, in Russia under communism, under Stalin, there were millions and millions of Christians wiped off the face of the earth. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause... God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Do you know that God's going to send them a strong delusion? What's a delusion? That's totally believing something when, when it's wrong. I mean, God's going to send them strong delusion. He's going to fool them. And for this God, for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth. Here's the punchline. Who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief 
of the truth. Did you catch that? Because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth. Oh boy, you take that to a, show that to a whosoever will church and they'll throw you out. Oh, you're a Calvinist. Well, if Calvin knew that God chose us from the beginning, I guess he was right on that point. I don't know. I've never really studied uh, John Calvin's theological beliefs. Because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth, whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Wherefore, therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which ye have been taught, whether by word or by our epistle, which is a letter, by the way. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which hath loved us and hath given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. Okay. All right, let's go to Romans 9. I know I'm spending a lot of time building up. Well, I'm building up for some questions that are going to come up. So I'm laying the groundwork. I know a lot of people absolutely detest the idea that God doesn't offer salvation to everybody, but... Let's read what Romans chapter 9 says. Verse 1. I say the truth in Christ, I lie not. The Hebrew roots people and the Paul haters say, Oh, he's a liar. He's a false apostle. I say the truth in Christ, I lie not. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I wish that myself were a curse from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. Who are Israelites? To whom pertaineth the adoption, and the glory, and the covenants, and the giving of the law, and the service of God, and the promises? Whose are the fathers, and of whom are concerning the flesh Christ came who is over all, God blessed forever. Amen. Not as though the word of God hath taken none effect, for they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children, but in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Hmm. See, Abraham had two children. The first one was Ishmael, which is generally, uh, virtually everybody, every Bible scholar, and the Muslims will all say that Ishmael was the father of the Arabic group of people, the people that have adopted Islam. But God God had a, something to say about that. God said, but in Isaac shall thy seed be called. See, Ishmael was rejected, which is one of the reasons why I, I think going to the uh, Arabic countries and trying to preach the gospel to them is, I won't say it's a complete waste of time because we don't know who is who. God knows who is who. But I would rather spend my time among the Europeans and those families. But that's my opinion. Neither because they, neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children, but in Isaac, 
shall thy seed be called. That is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God. But the children of the promise are counted for the seed. For this is the word of promise, at this time will I come, and Sarah shall have a son. See, Ishmael was born of Hagar. Sarah was like 90 years old. Verse 10. And not only this, but when Rebekah also had conceived by one, even by our father Isaac, for the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to election, that the purpose of God according to election might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. Do you know what an, elect, an election is? Uh, when people went to the polls, they had a choice. Hillary or Trump. That's what an election is. It's a choice. An election is a choice. People choose. For the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God, according to election, might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. It was said unto her, unto who? Rebekah, the father of uh, the wife of Isaac, Abraham, Isaac, and then Jacob. That the purpose of God according to election might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. It was said unto her, The elder shall serve the younger. Esau was born first. Jacob was born last. They were twins. Verse 13. And if you don't believe this, read Malachi chapter 1, verses 1 through 4. Four. As it is written in Malachi 1, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. And what did Esau do? He married into the Canaanite, Hittite, Satanic seed line. All his children from those lines were were and are cursed. They're cursed. And of course you got the black Hebrews that say, oh, you white people are Esau. Well, I'm going to let you in a little secret. If Esau was white and Jacob was his twin, what color do you think Jacob was? White, duh. You know? And I have whole studies on that stuff. Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? Ooh, is God unrighteous because he loved Jacob and hated Esau? Is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid. For he, he saith to Moses... I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. This verse right here tells you it's not whosoever will. So then, it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. It's not your will, it's not your running the race, but it's God that showed you mercy and me. And I needed a whole bunch of mercy. All the stupid garbage I did growing up. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, 
Even for the same person have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. God raised up Pharaoh to persecute the children of Israel. Even for the same person have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Therefore hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy, and whom he will he hardeneth. Do you know the Bible says that God hardened Pharaoh's heart? Sometimes Pharaoh hardened his own heart, but other times, at least once, God hardened Pharaoh's heart. God blinded Pharaoh so that Pharaoh would do God's will, would go after Israel, open the Red Sea so Israel could cross over on dry land. And when Pharaoh tried to do the same, the Red Sea that was parted closed and drowned Pharaoh's army. Therefore hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy, and whom he will he hardeneth. Thou wilt say then unto me, Why doth he yet find fault? For who hath resisted his will? Nay, but, O man, who art thou that repliest against God? Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, Why hast thou made me thus? In other words, why did you make me this way? Verse 21. God, I'm sorry. Verse 21. Hath not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? What if God, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction. Do you realize that God made Satan perfect and good? Knowing full well that he would be lifted up in pride, try to kill God with a war in heaven, and fall and become evil. Think about that for a while. What if God, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long-suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction, and that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy which he hath afore prepared unto glory? Even us, whom he hath called, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. Now, the word Gentile here is the word ethnos in the Greek. It's the same word they translate as nations. When they're talking about the nations of Israel, it's the same word that they use for Gentiles. And they want you to think that we are non-Israelites that were adopted in. No. The Jews were one tribe. And not, e not even all the Jews are of the tribe of Israel. A lot of them are of Esau. Others are of Hittite and Canaanite blood. Vessels of destruction. And it's oftentimes the leaders that lead, that are goats that lead the sheep astray. Judah was but one tribe. There were 11 others. And they want you to think that Gentile means non-Jew, and it does not mean that. Let's go to Re uh, Jeremiah verse 3, verse 1. They say, if a man put away his wife and she go from him and become another man's, 
Shall he return unto her again? Shall not that land be greatly polluted? But thou hast played the harlot with many lovers. Yet return again to me, saith the Lord. See, it was wrong. If a, if a man divorced his wife and she went and became the wife of another man, the man that divorced her was not supposed to go and, and get her back. But Israel, what do you think Israel did? God married Israel. She went and played with many lovers. But thou hast played the harlot with many lovers, yet return again to me, saith the Lord. Verse 2. Lift up thine eyes unto the high places, and see where thou hast not been lean, lean in, lean with. Oh, okay. That's, I believe that's Old English, and it means to, you know, lie. Not lie as in not tell the truth, but lie as in sexual, spiritual adultery, physical adultery, maybe both. Lift up thine eyes unto the high places and see where thou hast not been lying, lean with. In the ways hast thou sat for them as the Arabian in the wilderness, and thou hast polluted the land with thy whoredoms and with thy wickedness. Therefore the showers have been withholden, showers of rain, and there hath been no latter rain, and thou hast a whore's forehead. Thou refusedest to be ashamed. A whore's forehead. I'm not, I'm not even sure what that means. Uh, I know women in the Bible, uh, believe it or not, I have respect for the, uh, peep, the, the girls that wear uh, head coverings. The Bible even says wear head covering. It's not a salvational thing, okay? But and I'm not talking about the the Muslim burqa things where they cover every virtually every inch of their body and you only can see their eyes. I'm I'm not talking about that. But but I you know I kind of wondering those that cover their head. You know, what's a fo horse forehead? Is that a girl that didn't have any covering at all? Well, you know what? You want to see a, a horse forehead? Go down to the beach and look at all the young uh, young girls wearing thongs. And thou hast a horse forehead. Thou refusest to be ashamed. Wilt thou not from this time cry unto me, My father, thou art the guide of my youth? Will he reserve his anger forever? Will he keep it to the end? Behold, thou hast spoken and done evil things as thou couldst. The Lord said also unto me in the days of Josiah the king. I believe Josiah was the last good king of Judah. I could be wrong. Josiah was definitely a good king. Was he the last good king? I don't know. But I, I, Josiah was a good king. I, I look forward to meeting him one day. And by the way, he... Uh, he got rid of the Sodomites out of the land, broke break down their houses, and he drove them from the land. And when it says he, he drove them from the land, he, he didn't buy them Greyhound bus tickets to leave, if you catch my drift. The Lord said also unto me in the days of Josiah the king, Hast thou seen that which backsliding Israel hath done? Now, Judah and Israel at this time were separate kingdoms, sort of like the North and the South during the American Civil War. They were the same people, but they had different, different land areas they lived in, different king, uh, rulers, and Israel went into apostasy. Josiah and Judah, mm, they, they went into apostasy too, but Israel went first. The Lord said also unto me in the days of Josiah the king, Hast thou seen that which backsliding Israel hath done? She has gone up upon every high mountain and upon and under every green tree, and there hath played the harlot. The harlot's a whore, people. 
And I said after she had done all these things, Turn thou unto me. But she returned not. And her treacherous sister Judah saw it. Verse 8, Jeremiah 3, 8. And when, and I saw when for all the causes whereby backsliding Israel committed adultery, I had put her away and given her a bill of divorce. God divorced Israel. And I saw when for all the causes whereby backsliding Israel committed adultery, I had put her away and given her a bill of divorce, yet her treacherous sister Judah feared not, but went and played the harlot also. And it came to pass, through the lightness of her whoredom, that she defiled the land and committed adultery with stones and with stocks. And yet, for all this, her treacherous sister Judah hath not turned unto me with her whole heart, but feignedly, saith the Lord. And the Lord said unto me, The backsliding Israel hath justified herself more, more, than treacherous Judah. Go and proclaim these words toward the north. See, Judah was the southern kingdom. Israel was the northern kingdom. And think about it. Uh, what's north of the land of Israel? Europe. The same people that printed the Bibles. The same people that built the churches. The same people that proclaimed the gospel of Jesus Christ. Go and proclaim these words toward the north and say, Return thou backsliding Israel, saith the Lord. See, God divorced Israel. But here God says, Return, thou backsliding Israel, saith the Lord. And I will not cause mine anger to fall upon you, for I am merciful, saith the Lord. And I will not keep anger forever. Only acknowledge thine iniquity. That's extreme wickedness and sin. Only acknowledge thine iniquity, that thou hast transgressed against the Lord thy God, and hast scattered thy ways to the strangers under every green tree, and yet have not obeyed my voice, saith the Lord. Turn, O backsliding children, saith the Lord, for I am married unto you, and I will take you one of a city and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion." And the false preachers will want you to think that this was finished in 1948 when the Antichrists were gathered in the land of Palestine. I don't think so. Verse 15. And I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. The TV preachers, you're not going to get understanding. You're not going to get knowledge. Verse 16. And it shall come to pass when ye be multiplied and increased in the land in those days, saith the Lord, they shall say no more, the ark of the covenant of the Lord, neither shall it come to mind, neither shall they remember it, neither shall they visit it, neither shall that be done any more. At the time they shall call Jerusalem the throne of the Lord, and all the nations shall be gathered unto it. Nations. Same, well, it, this is Hebrew. Jeremiah's in Hebrew. Old Testament's Hebrew. But that's the same word, goy and goyim. Goyim is plural. Goy is singular. Sometimes they translate it Gentiles. Sometimes they translate it nations. In the Greek, it's ethnos, as where we get the word ethnic group. At the time, they shall call Jerusalem the throne of the Lord, 
and all the nations shall be gathered unto it to the name of the Lord to Jerusalem neither shall they walk any more after the imagination of their evil heart now listen to this in those days the house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel you see they don't the preachers tell you oh Jew and Israel that means the same thing no it doesn't God divorced Israel God didn't divorce Judah. In those days the house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel, and they shall come together out of the land. Oh, 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 oh. Listen carefully. In those days the house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel, and they shall come together out of the land of the north. What lands north of Palestine and Israel Europe the people that built the churches the people that printed the Bibles the people that spread the gospel all over the world in those days the house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel and they shall come together out of the land of the north to the land that I have given for an inheritance unto your fathers But I said, How shall I put thee among the children, and give thee a pleasant land, a goodly heritage of the hosts of nations? And I said, Thou shalt call me my father, and shalt not turn away from me. Surely as a wife treacherously departed from her husband, so have ye dealt treacherously with me, O house of Israel, saith the Lord. A voice was heard upon the high places, weeping and supplications of the children of Israel, for they had perverted their way, and they have forgotten the Lord, their God. Isn't that what happened? The children of Israel have forgotten their God. Return, ye backsliding children, and I will heal your backslidings. Behold, we come unto thee, for thou art the Lord our God. Truly in vain is salvation hoped for from the hills and from the multitude of mountains. Truly in the Lord our God is the salvation of Israel. For shame hath devoured the labor of our fathers from our youth, their flocks and their herds, their sons and their daughters. We lie down in our shame, and our confusion covereth us. For we have sinned against the Lord our God, we and our fathers from our youth even unto this day, and have not obeyed the voice of the Lord our God. All right, looks like I'm going to have to start a uh, get ready. Uh, I'm going to finish this up, but I'm, go I'm going to probably split this into two parts because it's already, I've gone over an hour. I haven't even covered what I wanted to cover. I'm just laying the groundwork, so... All right, let's take a look at uh, Hosea, and then we're going to go back to uh, Romans, and then I'll probably close it out and then do a part two. And my longtime listeners, you've probably heard me talk this stuff before, but uh, I hope you'll, if you if all this is familiar to you, then wait for the part two, because there's something, I'm going in a different direction. All right, Hosea chapter 1, verse 1. The word of the Lord that came unto Hosea, the son of Beri, in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah, kings of Judah, and in the days of Jeroboam, the son of Joash, king of Israel. You see, Jeroboam was king of Israel, and Hezekiah was king of Judah. They're not the same people according to the Lord Israel and Judah were different Judah was to be the tribe the kings were to come after Levi was the tribe of the priests they had different uh, they were different people you know people from New York are not the same as people from Georgia they're not the same Verse 2, the beginning of the word of the Lord by Hosea, and the Lord said, un, said to Hosea, Go, take 
unto thee a wife of whoredoms and children of whoredoms. For the land hath committed great whoredom, departing from the Lord. So he went and took Gomer, the daughter of Dibliam, which conceived and bare him a son. And the Lord said unto him, Call his name Jezreel, for yet a little while, and I will avenge the blood of Jezreel upon the house of Jehu, and will cause to cease the kingdom of the house of Israel. See, the Assyrian Empire came and conquered Israel and took them out of the land and made them slaves. They took them somewhere else. They took the people and scattered them. And then when the Assyrian Empire was collapsed, when the Babylonians came, the Assyrian Empire collapsed. Israel never returned back to the land. They went some they 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 vanished from history. You know what I find his, interesting is when Israel vanishes from history, the Europeans appear in history. It said Israel went to the Caucasus Mountains. That's where we get the term Caucasians. Think about that. All this was common Bible knowledge a hundred years ago. Today, it's considered heresy. And will cause to cease the kingdom of the house of Israel. And it shall come to pass in that day that I will break the bow of Israel in the valley of Jezreel. And she conceived again and bare a daughter, and God said unto him, Call her name Loruhama, for I will no more have mercy upon the house of Israel, but I will utterly take them away. But I will have mercy upon the house of Judah. So God's not going to have mercy, no mercy on Israel, but he's going to have mercy on Judah. You see, they're not the same people. I don't care what your demon nominational preacher tells you, that they're all the same. They're not. But I will have mercy upon the house of Judah, and will save them by the Lord their God, and will not save them by bow, nor by sword, nor by battle, by horses, nor by horsemen. Now when she had weaned Lord Yuhama, she conceived and bare a son. Then said God, Call his name Loami, for ye are not my people, and I will not be your God. What? For ye are not my people, and I will not be your God? Didn't we just read in Jeremiah 3.8 how God divorced Israel but not Judah? Oh yeah. For ye are not my people, and I will not be your God. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, there it shall be said unto them, Ye are the sons of the living God. Then shall the children of Judah and the children of Israel be gathered together and appoint themselves one head, and that's going to be Christ. And they shall come up out of the land, for great shall be the day of Jezreel. Let's go back to Romans chapter 9. Let's go to verse 22. What if God, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long-suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction, and that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy which he hath afore prepared unto glory, even us whom he hath called, not of the Jews only, but also 
of the Gentiles. Huh. And that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he hath before prepared unto glory, even us, whom he hath called, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles, the nations. What nations? The nations of Israel. Verse 25. As he saith also in Osi, which is the Greek rendering of Hosea. We just read this. As he saith also in Osi, I will call them my people, which were not my people, and her beloved, which was not beloved. Didn't we just read that? And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, ye are not my people, there shall they be called the children of of the living God. See, they want, you know, your demon nominational preachers want you to think that you're just a bunch of non-Jews, Gentiles, grafted into this little Jewish tree. No. No. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, ye are not my people, there shall they be called the children of of the living God. Esaias also crieth concerning Israel, though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. For he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness, because a short work will the Lord make upon the earth. And as Esaias, his Isaiah, said before, except the Lord of Sabaoth have left us a seed, we had been as Sodom and been and been made like unto Gomorrah. What shall we say then? That the Gentiles, which followed not after righteousness, have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith? But Israel, which followed after the law of righteousness, hath not attained to the law of righteousness. Wherefore? Because they sought it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law. For they stumbled at that stumbling stone. As it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone and a rock of offense, and whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. So what is this rock of offense, this stone of stumbling? Well, let's take a look real quick. And I'm going to close this out. All right, in 1 Peter chapter 2, and verse 8, we read, And a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. In Matthew 21, 42, Jesus saith unto, uh, unto them, Did ye never read in the scriptures the stone which the builders rejected? The same has become the head of the corner. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. So what is this stone? Well, let's take a look. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, let's take a look at verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant. What is ignorant? It means you don't know something. So Paul says, Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all, all our fathers, oh, wait a minute, were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. Wait a minute. Paul's writing to the Corinthians. The Corinthians were a bunch of Greeks. Wait a minute. Aren't they Gentiles, those non-Jews? Uh, wow. 
Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. The Red Sea. They were, they were baptized, basically, in the Red Sea, right? When the, when the sea parted and there was a cloud. There was a, a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night that followed Moses. And if you've never read the book of Exodus, you'd never know that. Verse 3, And did all eat the same spiritual meat? The manna, right? And they had water, too. It came from a rock in the middle of a desert. How else are you going to get water in the desert? Moses had them carry a rock, and the rock gave them water. And we're all baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and did all eat the same spiritual meat, and did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. What's the rock? The rock is Christ. But with many of them, God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our examples to the intent we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. Neither be ye idolaters as were some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. Neither murmur ye as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. Hmm. Now, all these things happened unto them for ensamples. They were to be an example unto us, people. You ever heard of, you know, the, the judge throws the book at somebody when, they're, when they get in, uh, break a law, and, and he's making an, an example of them. Now, all these things happened unto them for ensamples, and they are written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the world are come. Therefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed, lest he fall. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. And that's coming in the last days, people. Uh, there's going to be an image of the beast that's going to talk. And people are going to worship it, whose names are not written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And preterists just, they don't get it. They think all this, everything in the Bible was fulfilled in 70 A.D. And the next thing that's going to happen is Christ is going to come. Well, sorry, Matthew 24 tells me that false Christ will come first. So, all right, well, this is going to be the end of part one. And I'm not even sure what I'm going to name this Bible study. I, I was... Uh, going to ask some questions and it ended up being this but I did this for a reason so part two I'm going to ask some questions and from the Bible I'm not sure that I have all the answers because I don't but were there well, well we'll do that in part two all right, Jesus said in John 8, 12, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God, slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' name, amen.